Listen, it's been my honor for the past six years to represent the folks of Sunrise. You've heard me say that before. Nothing changes. It is still my honor to represent you. And thank you for allowing me to do this. And I'm, I'm coming before you today kind of for a job review. Okay? Uh, I hope that I perform to the extent where you might want to consider renewing my contract for another two years. You know, unlike our great Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, I go to Tallahassee where the Democrats are in the minority. You know, and still, you know, we hear the Republicans saying that they want to take back the seats that, that we've already won. And they want to take back their state. And the problem with that is that they want to take back the state, we want to take the state forward. That's the difference between Republicans and Democrats in Tallahassee. The reality is that these are the same folks who brought us SB6. These are the folks who deny a woman's right to choose. These are the folks who have all of these medieval ideas, uh, and they want to do everything to make sure that we do not live in a democratic state. So I want to take my time to talk about, I know uh, the uh, Kendrick Meek was here from the Kendrick Meek campaign. I want to talk about Alex Sink for just a moment. Because right now, what you have to understand is that in the state of Florida, the Republicans are in charge of the House of Representatives. The Republicans are in charge of the Senate. And up until Charlie Chris changes his uh, strikes for one more time, they were in charge of the governor's mansion as well. So what does that mean? That means that they could pretty much do whatever they want. They did whatever they wanted, and the result is the Republican recession that we're living in right now. So this is what they do when they have the ability to govern. They're pretty good at getting themselves elected, but pretty lousy at governing. And that's just the truth. They have more bad ideas than I've ever seen. They're going to be coming up with a bill this year to eliminate the separation of church and state. They had it up last year for a brief period of time, and then they took it down. But it's coming back again this year. SB6 is now, what I understand, SB1. So these are things that we have to be very, very concerned about. And without a democratic governor in the mansion, we're going to have a person there, Alex Singh doesn't win, the guy that will win, is so conservative, he's a little bit to the right of a tail of a hunt. <laughs> and make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. The Republicans in leadership did not even want him to be there. They all supported Bill McCollum. Understand that uh, uh, Senator Haradopoulos and Representative, uh, oh my God, Cannon, who's going to be the incoming speaker, spent over $1 million to defeat Scott. Now, if the Republicans don't want him, then we certainly don't want him. Okay? So now it gets serious. And what, you know, this is a race about character, this is a race about the right thing, and this is a race about moving the state forward. Now, Alex Singh has got great moral character. Scott is questionable. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this because he ran a gigantic company that received the largest penalty ever in the history of this country for Medicare fraud. Fraud, $1.7 billion penalty. And he says he didn't know what was going on in his own company. Some people say that really isn't true. He really did know and he condoned it. So let's look at it for one second and let's think about character while we're looking at it. Either A, he really did not know what was going on in his own company, and someone has to explain to me how that qualifies him to be governor of the state of Florida. Or B, he really did know what was going on and condoned it, and explain to me how that qualifies him to be governor of the state of Florida. Now, you've seen the ads where it says, Alex Sink lost $84 billion in, in the pension fund. Well, guess what? If you look at the date, on the end, you find out that the stock market, the bottom fell out on that particular day. But guess what? 
nothing was sold, and as a result, it all came back up to where now the, the Florida pension uh, is now one of the strongest in the country. I think it's number four in terms of funding. So there's no issue. Nobody's losing their benefits. Seniors who are retired will receive every single dollar they're entitled to from the state pension. And life goes on. And all they're trying to do on the Republican side is to scare people. And that's how you get elected. You frighten senior citizens. And you tell them that you're going to make things better for them. And it isn't true. Everything is fine right now. Yes, we have issues with foreclosures. And by the way, let's talk about foreclosures for one minute. You know, who deregulated, who did all the deregulation of the bank under Bush? You know, all those things were deregulated. And this is what the net result is. And what are the Republicans saying? They want more deregulation. Well, guess what? If it didn't work before, what makes you think it's going to work now? The bottom line is we must all support Alex Singh to get her elected. How do we do this? Every one of you sitting in this room will vote. I know that. If you haven't already, I know you will. But the challenge is for you to each bring 10 of your friends to vote. That's the challenge. In order for Alex Singh to win the governorship, she has to come out of Broward County with a gigantic majority. And you have the opportunity to help her. And you don't even have to leave your living room. All you have to do is pick up your, your address book and your phone book and call friends. Call friends who might not vote and tell them, please, go out to vote. It's essential that you do it. And that's all you have to do. So if you will do that, I am confident that Alex Singh will win that race. And we will have a Democratic governor in the mansion in Tallahassee. And believe me, that's what we need at this time to move the state forward. Thank you very, very much. And God bless you all. Representative Sands, our board voted also on behalf of all the members to give you a token donation for your campaign. Oh, wow. And we oh, thank you very thank much. You. But again, the best thing that we do is be out of the street for you and get our neighbors to be out of the street for you. And we thank you for all you do all year long. Um, Franklin Sands and Nan Rich represent this area. And as you know, we're very lucky because they come to almost every single meeting when they're in town. And Debbie Wasserman Schultz comes here when she is not in Washington, which is difficult on a Wednesday night. Before I continue the meeting, I'd like to introduce Elroy, John Elroy, president of the Young Democrats. And Percy Johnson from the Young Democrat Club. And I'd like to backtrack a little. It was really nice for, for Franklin Sands to take his time and talk about another candidate. And I would like to just have Debbie Wasserman Schultz comment on the negative postcards we've been getting from Dan Yelma, who we all know is a great guy. No, we've been getting we've been getting negative postcards about Dan Yelma, not from him. And how many of you got, have gotten those horrific anti-Semitic postcards? Well, I hope all of you realize that nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, th those are disgusting lies. That uh, Dan Delver, first of all, I've known Dan Delver for about 15 years, and not only is he Jewish himself, but a committed Jew involved in the organized Jewish community whose children go to Jewish day school in addition to, to public schools uh, for their education. And uh, that, that postcard is the move of someone desperate to undermine Dan's base of support. Now, just to clearly explain what, what they are talking about in that, in that postcard, there is a voucher program that the Republicans have pushed for years that allows a corporation to make a donation to a fund that provides vouchers to kids to go to private school. And Democrats oppose vouchers. So naturally, Dan is the Democratic leader led the charge against that legislation and consistently opposed it. It's, it's really, it was really terrible legislation. It was passed when the Republicans uh, saw the handwriting on the wall that they were going to lose their prized voucher program that was part of the uh, pride, part of their, uh, their FCAT education plan. Remember, the Supreme Court threw that out as unconstitutional according to our state constitution. 
So they bring in another voucher program so that they can get around that and get as many kids into private school because they hate public schools. Because they oppose the public, the public education and they have done everything they can, can to dismantle it. So now what they're doing is they're trying to undermine uh, Dan's support. Pam Bondi, his, uh, his terrible opponent, who should be ashamed of herself for allowing the, that mailing to go out and, uh, and not repudiating that mailing because she certainly knows it's not true. Uh, that mailing is designed to erode Jews' confidence in Dan's candidacy. And so I want to make sure that you know that none of it is true, that Dan supports Jewish education. He just supports it so that we, so that we can make sure that people pay for Jewish education privately, like all private schools should be paid for, not with public tax dollars. So I just wanted to clarify that. Most of us believe our kids should go to public school and money should be there, but you don't want to pay for Catholic schools and you shouldn't pay for Jewish schools. It all is all the same thing. The money should go to public education for public schools. Representative Martin Keir, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you come down? I need to tell you something about Martin Keir. The first time he ran for office, the first time he ran for office, he wore sneakers and I met him in shorts just like this. And he enjoyed walking door to door so much. And he represents Weston and Parkland and some of the areas that don't have condos. It's almost easier to walk condos, although the people that are running the city commission now are, uh, may not agree with that. But he walks door to door, and after he won, he kept walking to thank people for voting for him. I've never heard of anything so crazy. But this year, I know that he's walking door to door, and he's walking for Lori Rich Levinson. Can you tell us? Well, thank you so much, and I'll tell you that I honestly believe that the most important vote that we can make is for our school, and the reason being because every vote they make directly affects our children. You know, when Debbie makes a vote in Congress, or Franklin or I make a vote in the state legislature, it ultimately makes its way down to affect our children when you're dealing with education, but it could take a little while. But the school board, they make a vote on Wednesday, it affects our children on Thursday. And that's why I believe that we need the best and the brightest people on the school board. And I believe that Lori Rich Levinson will be a dynamo on our school board. As you know, <laughs> as you know, our school board has had some difficult problems lately, uh, ethically. And I know that Lori is one of the most ethical.